going on you guys it's your huggable hipster here and welcome back to another review so today oh, reach over. today we're going into the witcher 3 dlcs the witcher 3 dlcs are some of the best gameplay i've ever seen can i just put that out there story wise and action wise so good this is the way dlcs are supposed to be done okay this is exactly the way you are supposed to expand upon a story now i have on my list two bunches of dlcs that i like the ones from the evil within and now the ones from The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. So what I did was I combined both of the DLCs that I did into one article review so that it's not just, you know, Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine, it's both together. So let's dive in to The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt DLCs. We saw a brilliant story, diverse characters, and an entire library of monsters that just titillated the senses and brought players to their knees in this environment. CD Projekt Red brought together in two DLCs they expanded the story and they gave it like different branches that further made it just so exciting to see the development of Geralt, of Ciri, of these different characters. I was excited to the point where I would just be hopping in the chair. Like it was so cool, especially in Blood and Wine. And I will get to that. Heart of Stone and Blood and Wine both encompassed a story that is diverse, haunting, and one that told many truths of humanity in vivid colors. So let's dive into Hearts of Stone first, where putting into this DLC showed humanity. It showed the delicacy of a broken heart turned into a prideful brute. Olgird, the man who we take our main contract from to complete several tasks, including killing a toad, giving his brother a final good day, which essentially meant he took over Geralt's body and he tried to... <laughs> he tried to sleep with every woman at the wedding, which is just that part that part of the DLC was just hilarious in my opinion. And he tried wooing Shanny, which by the way, Shanny, she's just an amazing character. Can I just put that out there? Like, yes, okay, please, more of this character, Shanny. She is absolutely incredible. But then the quest caught my eye whenever it turned to a certain direction. Uh, and what made me fall in love with this DLC was Iris Von Everick. So seeing his old gear, cursed print, which turned him into a toad, and then made a pact with Odim, which sold his soul, essentially. Making this pact with Odim reassured his place in society, his role, his stature, at the cost of his emotions. Now, Von Everick obtained immortality, which gave him then a heart of stone, hence the title of the DLC. I think this puts things into very much of a human perspective, because you have Geralt, who is kind of like the mediator of sorts, bringing, <laughs> bringing Oligeard's dead wife, his brother, together. You know, it's like Three's Company, just, you know, medieval. But he helped everything in this situation come to a good resolve and a peaceful rest. If you have not played this DLC, I would highly recommend it because it is done the right way in terms of how DLC should be done and in terms of the character dialogue, in terms of just the way the story is done in general. It's really, really good. So let's get into some blood and wine, shall we? Perhaps my favorite part of the DLC package. So the story in DLC of Blood and Wine was some of the best writing and voice acting I think I've ever seen from an older, ga <laughs> older game, <laughs> 2015, older, okay. With this game, CD Projekt Red did it the right way. They actually did the DLC the way a DLC is supposed to be done. I will say that, come hell or high water, this DLC was done the correct way, as well as Hearts of Stone, but this DLC was actually very long. Like, it took me a couple of days to finish. It was really good, it was really thorough, and the connection between the original story, the characters of the main campaign, the expansion of the story, the way that they did it, it just all made sense. It all came to a good resolve. Oh, and did I mention those vampires? Did I mention there's vampires? Well, there's vampires! I was beyond delighted whenever I caught onto the fact that there were vampires, which are some of my, my favorite mythological creatures ever. I respected the lore of the vampire, but they added some new things to kind of, you know, make it like, <laughs> I was about to say hip and funky. <laughs> they, did, they did not make it hip and funky. They made it accurate to what the lore was, but they added some new things to kind of, you know, spice it up a bit. Respected the lore, and they made the lore shine through even more so than it already did. Like, they made the writing really good, but they respected the lore enough to make that shine through the writing, if that makes sense. There's this discussion of immortality and how it affects the vampire, and in an emotional and psychological sense of where do I go from here? How do I live this life? How do I go about living as this immortal creature that literally has to suck human essence? For a living. <laughs> no pun intended. Now it begs the question of do, does a vampire know the, the limits of the life they had as a human and regret 
the life of a vampire? Like, did they know what they were getting into kind of thing? I have so many thoughts on this DLC. It's not only fun, but it evokes emotion. It evokes psychological thinking because you have to understand that there is so much in here of where it's not just, oh, it's a vampire story. <laughs> you know, it has a lot, a lot of heavy thinking. I didn't even know what occur with this DLC. So much heavy thinking that got involved with the DLC. And then it got trailed off a bit into the spooky version of children's stories, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> In order to stop chaos reigning in Beauclair, we have to save an estranged sister from fairy tales. I don't know about you, but that just sounds delightful. That's sounding so ever, ever delightful. And I love it so much. You go from fighting an old witch who wants to eat kids to going to see the big bad wolf to seeing a wraith version of Rapunzel. I don't know about you, but I love the fact that they turned Rapunzel into a wraith. That was the best writing choice I think I've ever seen. And by the end of it, this weird, beautiful, slightly disturbing fairy tale adventure, you make your way back home and you are greeted in Bo the city of Beauclair by the very vampire, Detlef, that you were trying to get rid of. He ends up killing Sayana, the girl who you were rescuing, the estranged sister of sorts, and you either had the choice to fight him or let him go. I chose to let him go because I wanted to see what would happen and also because I was not up for a boss battle at the time. <laughs> So, yeah, because I, I let said vampire go, I received jail time within the game. <laughs> Which, I mean, Geralt receiving jail time. I can't imagine it. I feel like he can just, you know, caboose his way out of there. But, you know, we had a gentleman who looked at us while we picked up soap, so it was lovely. After a few words from the guardsmen, you realize that your bail has been paid none other by the lovely Emile, who, this is when it gets very, very human. This is when, in the game, you see the humanity just shine through these characters. While Emil is a vampire, he's much like Detlef to a degree. He knows that he's immortal, but he still has his humanity intact. Kind of reminds me of Angel from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, that brooding son of a bitch. I love him. He was, you know, Emil is very aware of this kind of curse slash gift that was bestowed upon him because a vampire with a moral conscience, if you will, is <laughs> trying to give Geralt a pep talk. <laughs> Two, while reminiscing, talking about life and having this brief exchange, I feel it could actually happen like the dialogue itself was so smooth and rich and unique that I feel like it's something that could actually happen in real life you know it was that well done you could hear the humanity you knew that these characters had a voice they weren't just 3d creations on a screen you know they came to life they brought the lore the history together in a way that was uh, almost seemingly unimaginable to a certain extent. So let's go into my final thoughts on these DLCs. These two DLCs, Hearts of Stone and Blood of Wine, were so well done. They had my head spinning with excitement whenever I was playing them, especially Blood and Wine, because that, I just love vampires in general, okay? Some of the stories and some of the content I thought was even better than the original campaign. Like, that's how much I was into it. Like It was just so good. So, so good. This game will be a favorite of mine. Like, I know I'm going to be thinking about Blood and Wine for a very long time. Even Hearts of Stone, you know, the, the way that they did the entire concept of ghosts and, you know, that kind of lost love that you need to, you know, you need to fix in a certain way. Having a ghost, having a lasting uh, effect on the world and how things are portrayed for the person that they left behind, it's really interesting. It shows the players the stories explained in a way in which it could do wonders for the main campaign. Like, the way the stories were explained uh, for these two DLCs made the world of the main campaign of The Witcher more expansive and more beautiful and more stunning. From Hearts of Stone, a mournful piece on love and loss, to Blood and Wine, a story of forgiveness, reflection of oneself, and coming to terms with the world as it is, both of these DLCs have so many sides to Geralt and the world of The Witcher. So you guys, that, that was it. That, that was my review on the two DLCs from The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love doing these reviews. The next review that is going to be up is going to be for Doom Eternal, which that game... Doom Eternal was fun. That was a really, really fun game to do. I honestly... I did it on I'm Too Young to Die because I just... I want to enjoy the story. I want to be able to enjoy things. I don't want to have to take an eternity to try to finish the game. I think I might try to go through it on the level nightmare at some point. But you guys, that was it for me. If you all like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below because I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes on the weekends. Stay casually nerdy and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys.